heard any of the music, but I believe she's a musician. Um, but she has yeah. had Lyme disease. I felt yes. like I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk, I couldn't move. I thought I was dying. And I would say, amen, that's exactly what it feels like. Again, right. when it's not been caught early and, and it's getting a hold of your body. Um, this is a picture I took. Um, I haven't been able to quite qualify how it feels, but your life goes to the gray over on the right. <laughs> you live in a gray world. And if you talk to people with Lyme, they will understand what gray world is. Right. God bless you if you've never lived in a gray world. But it is not a good place to be. But literally everything in your life is gray. There is no color. And another one that I find in the Lyme community, and I've only found it in other certain mental health situations, like schizophrenia, I think is one that I've heard it. But if you talk about dread, Dread is a common thing in the Lyme community. So if you're talking and you hear that somebody's explaining it, they say, I feel dread, that would be another hallmark to me that they need to be checked for Lyme. Yep. A great world can come though through many different chronic conditions, but I'm just saying um, particularly Lyme will send you there um, and you'll be just in a great world. I literally was so hungry for color that uh, my sister-in-law had gotten me a subscription to a magazine one of those ladies' magazines and they have color swatches in it, colored paint. I would literally tear that page out and put it next to my bed just so I had color to look at, to concentrate on, because my world was so dark and so gray. Yep. Okay. Lyme disease, there's early, disseminated, and late stage. Early, Lord willing, is where you catch it. That's where it's the most easily treatable. Um, catch it, Lord willing, you're done with it. Some of it can hang around, but usually you've gotten it to a point that your body is able to handle it. All of us right now are carrying a myriad of organisms in our bodies, mm -hmm. okay? Some of, um, in, in your age group, maybe deal with shingles or can know people with shingles, and it's a virus that you've had for years, but your body gets out of whack and all of a sudden you become symptomatic. We, um, we have all kinds of organisms in us, and our body gets to a point where it can handle it. Sorry about and that's what that. we want to get to, kill off as many organisms as possible and get your immune system so it can handle it. So early is usually, you know, somebody got a bullseye, somebody knew they've gotten an engorged tick, it's been on for three days, had to have the doctor dig it out, they put me on antibiotics. Most likely, you're experienced an early or acute stage and you'd be okay. Disseminated, it wasn't caught as early, maybe it's months out, you've gone in because you're thinking you had a touch of arthritis, but it's weird because the arthritis isn't always in my one shoulder. One day it's in this shoulder and it gets better so I don't think about it, but the next few days it, it shows moves. up in my right leg and then it gets better so I don't think about it. I don't go in because I'm a tough northern Minnesota person so I don't complain, but you know what? If next week it's back in my shoulder, but then it's over in my other, and it's, so there's this migrating kind of a thing. That's when you start to pay attention, and all of a sudden you're having night sweats, and you want to know while you're having chills. And it's really weird, doctor, because every four weeks I feel really lousy. Or every two weeks I feel really lousy. Now that I'm paying attention, but you need to be vigilant, you need to pay attention, because a good doctor will understand those are clues if it's every two weeks, if it's migrating, or if those symptoms are every four weeks, or for some reason now you can't handle a full moon, a uh, Lyme doctor will know what those are indicating. Okay, as I said, Borrelia is the number one organism. There are co-infections that come along with them. Our main ones that we deal with are underneath here, Babesia, Bartonella, Ehrlichia, Mycoplasma. Um, that's Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Yes, we have that in Minnesota. And Anaplasmosis. Um, there's also Wasson virus. A lot of these are our, our animals are the first things that we see these organisms getting into. So a lot of you maybe have had your animals treated for some of these. Um, but they are in our list for humans as well. And you can see up at the top, if you're looking for a good website, this is one of them, LymeDisease.org. That's pretty easy to remember. Another good one is ILADS, I-L-A-D-S.org. And then um, one of my favorite, MN Lime, short for Minnesota, mnlime.org. That's our whole Minnesota um, support group. Uh, again, let's see. Babesia. Babesia is a protozoa, it's not a bacteria 
for a virus, so we have Babesia, it's a protozoa, is somewhat malaria-like. It's very similar to malaria. So I'm having chills, I'm having night sweats, I'm having shortness of breath, I'm having all these things. Because it turned out this thing had invaded my red blood cells. It likes to go intracellular. That's why it's hard to find these, again, for lab tests and everything. It likes to go intracellular. So um, somebody who's in a lab and does a good job, I know in your area, um, Dr. Ledbetter has done a really good job at identifying these in the lab. I really appreciate that. Yep. So he's been able to see them in the red blood cells, but that's why I was getting so short, he's well, so much short of my breath, and that's why I was having the cycling of symptoms. Um, but chills, night sweats, muscle uh, muscles, um, that's one of the big ones. Another one is the Bartonella. Perhaps you've heard of scat, um, cat scratch fever. Okay, that it's, it's the same kind of organism. This one, you're getting stretch marks and you're a man. What happened? Well, Bartonella. So but yeah. if you're a lady and you've got stretch marks where you shouldn't have them, Bartonella. But not all of us have those that show up on us. But if you have those streaky marks showing up for no good reason, it could be Bartonella. And again, it attacks the, nerve, the central nervous system. You can have skin issues. Uh, again, with this one, because of the CNS, poor memory, uh, rage, the fatigue. I mentioned the Wasson virus. You're seeing that a lot in our animals. We're gonna see that more and more in the, in the yeah. human population. Yeah. This one can cause severe encephalitis. So if you or a family member are going through an encephalitis, make sure immediately that they're checking for Wasson because it needs to be caught very, very quickly. It can move very quickly. Wow. Anaplasmosis, uh, this one is uh, getting acquired through blood transfusions. So maybe you haven't had any ticks by you, but you're going in for blood transfusions. This is one that can be uh, through blood transfusions. They're doing a better job. I just got a contact last week from someone who was a donator. And so they have been notified that their blood had been checked and they found out they had Babesia because they were a donor. And I was That's thrilled. great I news. For blood bank. And I was thrilled to know that they were testing and yes. they're starting to test because we do have compromised blood bank. And so it's very important when you're doing the screening because a lot of you may be some of our precious blood donors, but make sure that you're going through this screening right because you're there to do good. And I know you wouldn't want to pass on anything either. Um, there's another Borrelia called Borrelia Maya Motoy. Mm -hmm. And that one's out there. Another one you may have seen just this winter, the Mayo Clinic came out and said, hey, we discovered one. Yeah. Although I personally wouldn't recommend the Mayo Clinic if you have Lyme disease to go there for Lyme disease. You can ask me about that later. But they did uh, identify Borrelia mayonii. Then there's a lichiosis. A lot of people, anybody yeah. had a, a lichia? Yeah, okay. That was the one where you're aching, you're like you have the flu and you go in and it's weird because you have these liver enzymes that are raised. That was one that, you know, it shows up in the winter and everybody thinks it's the flu, but it's not. So one of the hallmarks there is to watch if they've tested blood tests and your liver enzymes are up. And again, I mentioned the uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Okay. Um, Lyme disease is absolutely devastating. And we need to get on top of this because it's going to not only, it's already impacting individuals, impacting families, but it's soon going to impact us in our communities That's right. and beyond. This was um, done, a uh, survey was done, and some research was done on how impactful it is and how does it compare to other uh, chronic conditions that people might have. So with Lyme, Depression is four to five times higher in Lyme versus lupus or RA, or rheumatoid arthritis. Three main factors of functional impairment are that we are in pain, we have mental fatigue, and we have depression. For the post-treatment syndrome, so such as me who is continuing to have to deal with symptoms, there's a lot of neuropsychiatric issues, depression or cognitive processing is 10 to 15% slower. For me, it's way more slower than that. <laughs> it's very, very frustrating when you've been a person that is used to your brain clicking along and all of a sudden it's just not clicking. Um, difficulty with verbal retrieval, fine motor difficulty. I can barely write anything anymore that's legible. Most, if, I have, if I'm writing, I usually have to use a keyboard. Um, 
I'll start out pretty good, but pretty soon you, you won't be able to read really right. Brain fog is a big issue for us. Suicidal thoughts in the general population may be one in 20, but in mine, one on five. That's right. Suicidal thoughts that they're dealing with. All of us. I love this. Um, I don't have it up here, but in this, there it said that religion was demonstrated as a positive restraint. How absolutely lovely is that? And I had seen another one that was actually dealing with AIDS, but it's worth noting. So AIDS patients were, um, they were doing research and it was found that AIDS patients who had a belief in a higher power, their immune system was magnificently better than those who did not. Hmm. But they took it one step farther and they said, they qualified it that not only did you believe um, that there was some higher power, but it was a specific <laughs> higher power. And their health and dealing with it overall was statistically overwhelmingly wonderful. So anyway, you have much to share with people who are going through any chronic condition as a believer. And you know what, dealing with those of us who have a chronic condition, is not fun. We are very, very difficult people to be around. <laughs> now, anytime you are willing to reach into our brave world, you are doing a wonderful, marvelous thing. It's, it's not an easy calling, but we appreciate when you do. So basically, for anybody who has experienced congestion or heart failure, or knows who, someone who is limited by congestive heart failure, our activity level is comparable or less than what they can do. Okay. Our quality life um, is not is not good. If you're comparing us to those with asthma, depression, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, fibromyalgia, congestive heart failure, we perform far less. And I was going to, I don't think I finished my thought. If any of you or have a loved one that's getting diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or ALS or Alzheimer's, especially with Alzheimer's, that's, that's I lost right. a mother in law to Alzheimer's. If I were that family member, that's right. we would go find a Lyme physician that's right. who was very good diagnostically. Yep. And I, if, if I had to bring a family member Amen. who now with Alzheimer's, I wouldn't accept that until I had it completely ruled out right. by a doctor who knows Lyme disease. Because they, uh, they've done, sadly, post-mortem uh, studies are showing that Lyme is showing up, Borrelia in particular, in almost 100%. So, and same thing with MS, Lou Gehrig's, at least try, at least go to a Lyme doctor who knows what they're doing. Get, because even as miserable as Lyme is, it is treatable. There is something that can be done, okay? I'm just saying, but you did hear it from me. Okay. Um, these are, if you have Lyme disease, these would be funny. Yeah. And I won't spend a lot of time. Our chronic pain scale is up there. <laughs> That's me on a lot of days, laying in bed. And those are just a few of the things I take in a day to try to keep myself going. How many have heard of the spoon theory? If you haven't heard of the spoon theory, look that up sometime. It's a great way for us to try to explain to you how we live our days. Or, or if you're working with anybody, if anybody's with Stevens Ministries, you have Stevens Ministries here. Well, if you have any kind of a uh, ministry where you're walking along someone, walking alongside, walking alongside someone with a chronic illness, look up the spoon theory. It'd be good um, for you and for them. Again, economic impact, these are from studies. These are the mean costs. If you're treated right away, and this is old data, it might cost you about $400. If you catch it early, like that disseminated stage, it might be over $1,600 um, a year. But look at that bottom number, over $20,000. Personally, that's very conservative. And this is from somebody who doesn't have the stamina anymore to hold a job. This is somebody who has a husband, bless his heart, that works his tail off, right. a rural pastor. And this is somebody who 